All right, everybody. So let's uh, let's. Uh, I wanted to bring up some things related to uh, the next several weeks uh, lab. Um, so we're going to be doing this thing in lab called a titration, and I wanted to touch on some background information. Uh, regarding titrations, because before we talk about a titration, we need to talk about acids and bases. And so what is an acid uh, besides things that, you know, eat away that fork or whatever in, in science demonstrations? All right, so acids are a molecule that... That willingly uh, donate or give up a hydrogen as a cation, so positively charged. Typically refer to this as a proton. Why is it called a proton? Well, so hydrogen, right? It's an atomic number of one. Its atomic mass is one. So hydrogen consists of one proton and one electron. Well, a positively charged hydrogen, H+, plus, will only consist of a proton. It loses the thing that has a negative charge, so now it's a positively charged molecule with just a proton. So, in order to do this, that compound, or that molecule, then must accept the electron from it. So what are some examples of this? Well, let's see. One example of a strong acid, HCl, hydrochloric acid, right? Um, HF, hydrofluoric acid, uh, H2SO4, sulfuric acid, uh, and so let's draw out the structure of that. Okay. So there's a thing in common here. Uh, if you notice, there are... Um, Basically, how I view this is with electronegativity. You have hydrogens on all of these compounds, right? So, hydrogen, 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 right? And these are bound together through bonds. Now, if you notice with chlorine and fluorine, they're both right here in the halogens. They have seven valence electrons. Hydrogen has one valence electron. Now, what we see, if you look at this uh, graph over here, that there is uh, fluorine and chlorine right here. And this is a scale of electronegativity. This basically determines how much a particular atom wants an extra electron. The higher the number is, the more it will want it. Chlorine and fluorine are two of the most electronegative atoms that exist, that we are aware of. So, all right, basically what they want is, let's draw out 
So there's there's chlorine. And then let's use red for our hydrogen electron. What happens is this is a bond. However, basically what it is is because fluorine, oh, well, in this case chlorine, but the same thing goes for fluorine. So if we do it there, they both have seven valence electrons. Hey. What you really have happen is you have hydrogen will give its electron to chlorine. And this is what happens when you put the, these compounds into a solution. So they will dissociate into a Cl minus and an H plus. And so both of these are happy because they're in a lower energy state. The chlorine has a filled valent shell and the hydrogen has an empty one. This right here represents a strong acid. It dissociates completely in water into H plus and Cl minus. Same thing with H2SO4. You'll have, in this case, the oxygen, which is over here, still a very electronegative atom, and hydrogen, much less electronegative. So if we draw our electrons here, right, so here's our bond between hydrogen and oxygen. What's going to happen is when you put this into a solution, you're going to get a hydrogen and the oxygen is going to take that bond, the electrons in that bond. So one of the, whenever there's a, a drawn bond, you have two electrons in that bond, one from each of the atoms in that. So there's our electron from the hydrogen, and there's our oxygen electron. All right. So now we have that negatively charged, this positively charged, and there we have our sulfuric acid and HCl, and this is what they dissociate into when you put them in water. So we just, we talked about acids, but now what about bases? Well, bases are essentially the opposite of an acid, so Right, with an acid, they're willing to donate a hydrogen cation or proton. In the, for, in the context of a base, bases are things that are accepting the protons. So, So common base are different hydroxides, essentially. So NaOH, sodium hydroxide, KOH, potassium, Those sorts of things. 
And so what happens is when you put these in solution, they're going to dissociate and you're going to get a... So once again, um, you've got oxygen, which is more electronegative. These are an ionic bond. And you have basically NaOH consists of a sodium cation and a hydroxide anion. Negatively charged. So this guy right here is a hydroxide. This is willing to accept a proton. So if you have a proton over here in the presence of a hydroxide, you'll have one of these lone pair of electrons will come in and form a bond with the hydrogen and you get HOH or H2O otherwise known as water. So if I take NaOH and mix it with HCl, what do I get when I dissociate these ions? Well, so first off, I once again, I get, you know, NaOH. It's really Na plus and OH minus over here. And then H plus Cl minus over here. And what happens is, is this hydroxide is going to come over here and take this proton and it's going to form water. So we get H, O, H. Two lone pairs, and then the ions are going to then associate, and we get NaCl. So this is why... Um, when you react an acid and a base, typically what you get is water and a salt. All right, so now that we've discussed what makes an acid an acid and what makes a base a base, um, we're gonna look at how we measure acidity and basicity. So people who have say worked in uh, pool maintenance or have a fish bowl or anything like that probably have heard of the term pH. All of you have probably heard of the term pH, but so pH is the measurement of how many protons are present in a solution. Right. And so pH is equal to the negative log of, I'm using brackets here, the concentration of protons in solution. Conversely, you have pOH, 
which is the opposite, right? So P P O H is equal to the negative log of hydroxide in solution. Now, um, a simple thing to keep in mind is pH plus pOH will be equal to 14. Each of these, right, they go on a scale of 0 to 8, of, sorry, 0 to 14. So in the case of a pH, the lower your pH, the more protons you have, the more acidic your solution is. So um, one thing about um, special about water, right? So if you take water, and it's just pure water, and you have a solution of it in a beaker or something that's properly cleaned, that solution of water will have a pH for water equals 7. Therefore, since this, right, pOH will also be equal to 7. This is because when you take water, right? So H O H portions of the water will it's called autoionization. You will get a little bit of Structure water. And so we can take, <clears throat> you know, if we have another water molecule. What you can have happen is these lone pairs can attack the hydrogen on another water, and what you get is a uh, H3O plus. With only one lone pair. And then you have uh, what's left over is an OH minus. So in this case, you have this water molecule functioning as an acid, right? It's donating a hydrogen, a proton in this case, because it's accepting the electrons. Acids donate protons, accept electrons. And then this one is functioning as a base in that it's accepting the proton. And you get this. And so you get an equal concentration of both by definition of this, right? So that's why you have this 7 and 7 for each. You can also measure the strength of an acid with uh, something called pKa. Now, Ka is the dissociation constant of an acid. 
And so pKa, the lower your pKa value is, so as pKa decreases, acid increases. All right, so Um, I should mention going back to this, you know, the, this this rent. I, I mentioned it, but um, you know, further illustrate. So when you have a pH of zero, you know, there's a scale from zero to fourteen for both of these, for pH and pOH, and it ranges from zero to fourteen. There's special cases of like super acids and whatnot, but for for the majority of cases here, we go from scale. So this is most acidic. Most basic. And so seven is where you have water on the pH scale and that's considered neutral. So over here, you have your acids. And over here, you have your bases. Then PA, POH, sorry, is the reverse of that, right? So when you have a POH of zero, right? Because these are, these are inverse, since this plus this is equal to 14, as your pH decreases, your pOH must then increase, right? So therefore, solutions that have a low pH have a very high pOH. Go ahead. Conversely, solutions that are very basic, right, they will have a low pOH, but a high pH. All right, so the, the nice thing about these strong acids, I should get into this, so like, HF is kind of a unique case and that the bond between H and F is strong enough that it doesn't properly dissociate and thus it's not considered a, a strong acid in, in water. However, with a strong acid, what's meant by strong acids is that when you put them into water, right? So if I take HCl which is a strong acid and I put it into a beaker of water this will fully dissociate H plus Cl minus every one of these HCl molecules will dissociate. So HCl goes completely to H plus Cl minus. So the molarity of HCl that I started with, since all of it gets converted, will be equal to, so, concentration of protons and it's not plus but both 
basically all these will be the same, right? Because you're getting this, a concentration of this, and all of it is dissociated into either this or this. So if I have 0 0.1 moles of HCl, and I put it in water, what I will get is 0 0.1 moles of H plus and 0 0.1 moles of OH. Sorry, not OH, but Cl minus. Okay, so how do we measure this? Um, well, one option uh, typically done is pH strips, right? So the litmus paper. And this is where we get the term, you know, this uh, lit litmus test. Uh, basically, so just some paper that has compounds on it that change color depending on what your pH value is. And it changes. So your, your color, it will be more reddish at lower pHs and it'll be more bluish at higher pHs. So in more basic solutions, you'll have a more blue appearance, a more red appearance in acidic and low pH environments. Now, then you have probes. That use the right so they look at a uh, measurement of pH by looking at the voltage across a sensor. Because what is what are acids? They are ions in solution, right? So you have H plus. And so ions conduct electricity, they're charged. And so you can measure that voltage across the thing and correlate that to the concentration of ions. And then once you have the concentration of ions, you can calculate the pH, right? So that's how pH probes work. All right, sorry, I had to adjust the positioning of the pictures to create some more room. Um, but so here's the final method I'm going to talk about for how to measure pH. And this is the way we're going to use for the lab. And this is through use of uh, indicator. And this is something that will change in appearance um, at different pH values. In this case, it turns light pink. Yeah, okay. 
this is in basic conditions. So uh, this is the structure and the molecule that we're looking at is phenolphthalein. And so this um, has OH groups on it. This is a hydroxyl group. These themselves can function as, um, as acids. And they're strong, I'm sorry, they're, they're much weaker than say like HCl is, but As the solution becomes more and more basic, eventually you will have enough hydroxides in that solution that you can come and grab one of these H's, kick off and form a uh, anion. And what this does is this causes a change in the color of the molecule, which you see here. So it goes from a clear color, and your beaker. So your beaker will be clear, and then it turns to this as you get to a higher pH. So it's I use gray. It's gray, and then it'll, it'll start to change over to pink. <clears throat> and this happens at around 8.2. What you'll notice is as you start getting close to this value, right, as your pH starts getting close to this, you'll see when you add in your hydroxide, your, your sodium hydroxide solution, you'll start to get the formation of, you know, pink in the area of where you're dropping. And that's because, right, so you're taking the hydroxide solution, which is basic, and you will be adding it. And right where it's added, right, that concentration is higher initially until it's get gets mixed in. So this area is basic and that causes the indicator to change. So a good approximation for when you're starting to get close is when you start to see this happen. The longer this takes to go away as you're swirling, right, the closer you're getting here. And once you get this and it doesn't go away here and you get this, then you've reached your endpoint. Now you wanna be careful about this, that you don't go too far and just convert it all over right away because you know, once, you know, once you're here, there's no difference between here and here. So if you add a bunch and a bunch and a bunch of your hydroxide solution and go all the way to here instantaneously, well, you don't know when your titration point 